grew up in a segregated, I was born in Mississippi, in the Delta. My mother and father were sharecroppers. That's where you work 10 hours a day shopping cotton and picking cotton and end up with about maybe $3,000 for the whole year, etc. cetera. Because the man owned the grocery store and gas station, owned everything, put you on the book. Uh, it was segregated milk. I, I, I didn't know what I know now, but I knew something was wrong with that system. In fact, we were in a department store one day, and I decided to taste white water, see what it tastes like. The time I'd been down to do it, my mother, bam! So that was against the law. She said, son, don't do that. They're going to arrest you, and me too. And it's just a series of things that I knew wasn't right. I don't know where I got that from, except I just knew it wasn't right. And so when the movement came, I was ready for it. I was a student at Fisk University in 1960, a graduate student. Uh, when the movement hit in Greensboro, North Carolina, uh, we in, in Nashville had been working on nonviolent workshops, et cetera, Reverend Jim Lawson. We were ready to go. We went downtown and sat in. 300 of us were arrested, a lot, a lot of them from Fisk. Uh, their parents were horrified because they kids in jail. My mother called me all upset about it because, you know, that wasn't, it's a new movement. And I became the first chairman of SNCC in Raleigh, North Carolina, when Dr. King called us together to, uh, he wanted a youth group that Ella Baker talked us into forming our own organization. Thus, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, uh, SNCC, was born in that particular time. And I went back to uh, Nashville, who's had demonstrations, very, very successful, and opened up lunch counters. And then I went to uh, uh, University of Tennessee, working on my doctorate in chemistry. They did three years, only black student, out of 3,000 students. I was getting tired of chemistry anyway, so I joined the civil rights movement full time, working in Mississippi, Arkansas, and Alabama and Georgia, and, and a little bit of work in Tennessee, not much. And so my history, uh, the civil rights movement is replete with working. I must have been arrested at least two dozen times in various places for sitting in or failing to move on or some combination of trespassing, uh, like that. And back in 1964, that was a summer project. We just celebrated our 50th anniversary of it. Uh, I was very active in Mississippi, active in the summer project. Bob Moses uh, conceived it, we executed it. But a thousand, most of the white people, two of us came down. They were the sons and daughters of the editors of Time Magazine and Jerry Brown, whose father was the governor. Those are the kind of people that came over Mississippi up because when they started seeing their sons and daughters kicked in the behind and beat up and, and jailed, and et cetera, that opened Mississippi up. Those were the same summer, the three civil rights workers. Uh, got assassinated, Serena Goodman and Cheney. Then fast forward to, uh, backwards, to uh, Marshall Washington. I know I've been to Washington since I passed through, and John Lewis was chair of our organization. They didn't want him to speak, and we told him if he doesn't speak, nobody will speak. We're gonna take over the microphone. We were revolutionaries back in those times, you know. And, uh, I went to Washington, hit the stick office. I was elected mayor in 1979. I was mayor for 16 years. Unprecedented. And uh, did a lot of great things for our city, transforming it in the renaissance of it. But most, one of my favorite projects was summer jobs for young people. We had 4,000 the year before, and we did 25,000, almost choked the bureaucracy. So I don't know how we going to do it. Well, we did it, and it became a model for the nation. Over 100,000 young people 
went through that program. Give them that, that start, kept a lot of them out of jail, and then several. We did downtown development in Washington. We minority businesses, 3% to 47%. And on and on, I was part of the Vietnam and in, and in the Vietnam War movement. And uh, when Barack Obama was elected, he stood on our shoulders. He would not have been elected. Because in the 84, I supported Jesse Jackson. That lesson came close, but not enough delegates. And uh, in fact, I nominated him in San Francisco. And so I've had a long history of civil rights, human rights, and in Vietnam War, working against poverty, and all those kind of things, uplifting people, giving them hope, giving them help. And, uh, you know, it's hard to tell that story in a short period, but I sort of condensed it. Uh, the movement was a great movement. There weren't a lot of us who we were Banner Brothers, Sisters of Trust, Banner Brothers, Circle of Trust, and we made a profound di difference on America. Just like the anti Vietnam War movement made a big difference on America. In fact, I was watching something on CNN about the 60s. We saw uh, the dogs in Birmingham and the bombing of the church and all the other. He is saying, I was in Washington, D.C. Uh, when Dr. King was assassinated. I was upstairs in Walter Point Roy, planning the second movie he was on. And uh, after we got through crying and said, each of us for when we got the power, we put something historic on that site. Part of the reason young people don't get as involved with struggle is that those of us who are older uh, were involved with struggle. So if you're involved with struggle, you know what struggling is all about. These young people today have not had that opportunity of struggle. So they understand it up here, but not in here. And they need to get more actively involved with changing their lives, their own lives first, the lives of other people. Because everything that black people have got in this country, we've had to take it whether the Voting Rights Act, the Civil Rights Act, or anything else. You know, we've had to fight for it. In 1848, uh, Frederick Douglass, who lived in Washington, the sage of Anacostia, said, 1848, power concedes nothing without a demand. Never has and never will. That was true then, and it's true now.